Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Naval War College graduation ceremony. I am Captain Patrick Keyes, the Dean of Students, and will be serving as the MC for today's ceremony. You are welcome to take photographs at any time throughout the ceremony. We have official photographers taking pictures today, and you will find those photos posted on our Flickr site, found on the back of your program for you to download. At this time, as a courtesy, please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate, and please remain seated for the student procession. Please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, national anthem, and invocation. The National Anthem will be sung by musician first class Dan Smith from the Navy Band Northeast. Please join him in singing the United States National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wear 
Commander David M. Todd, Chaplain of the Naval Leadership and Ethics Center, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray your blessing upon these graduates of the College of Naval Command and Staff and the College of Naval Warfare. We gather to honor this afternoon. Your word reminds us as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. For the past academic year, these leaders have had their minds sharpened by the rigors of study and new ideas. Their experience and insight tempered on the anvil of reflection and critique and their critical reasoning refined through the crucible of academic discourse, debate, and discussion. We give you thanks for sustaining them through every test, exercise, and paper, and the per perseverance that enabled them to run the course with endurance, and ask your providential care and blessing be upon them. Bless also the faculty and staff that have instructed, challenged, and demanded more of these students that they might be fully equipped and ready for the task ahead and for the family and friends who have encouraged and supported them, we give you thanks. We pray that you would use this ceremony to stir in each of us a renewed desire to engage the challenges that lie ahead and a firm commitment to fulfill our role in serving the cause of security, prosperity, and peace for all, looking forward to the day when your truth, justice, and righteousness shall reign. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Captain Edmund Hernandez, Chair, Joint Military Operations Department. Professor Walt Wildeman, Director, College of Distance Education. Dr. Michael Pavovic, Chair, Strategy and Policy Department. Dr. David Cooper, Chair, National Security Affairs Department. Dr. Phil Hahn, Dean of Academics. Dr. Jay Hickey, Associate Provost, United States Naval War College, and Rear Admiral Jeffrey A. Harley, the 56th President of the United States Naval War College. Sir, the stage is yours. Uh, good afternoon. I am particularly honored to be here today at this graduation ceremony to celebrate the extraordinary accomplishments of our graduates the Naval War College class of 2017, and to formally mark their transition from intellectually curious students at arrival to the enlightened and dedicated professionals in strategy and national security they represent today. I simply hope my words today reinforce your experience of this last year and perhaps in some small way tie together the threads of this rigorous year of education. For today, you all join the long line of Naval War College graduates that extends back over 131 years. You are the new line of leaders from a list that includes the heroes that helped make our nation and countless more unsung heroes whose daily efforts defined our nation and set the course we follow today. Through your dedicated efforts and hard work, you have also been able to refine your warfighting skills and grown as members of the profession of arms. Although each of you worked very hard to be here today, let's not forget the tremendous efforts of our brilliant and committed faculty and staff. To the faculty and staff, I would like to say thank you and bless you for your gift to this new generation of leaders. I also want to say thank you to the families and friends who join us today. Thank you for supporting your spouses, your children, your brothers, your sisters, and friends during their hard work here at the college. Your presence not only makes this celebration more memorable for your graduates, it recognizes your role in the accomplishments that we celebrate today. Life in the military takes a team. Your love, encouragement, and support are the foundation of all that we do. Thank you for your love and support. Speaking of foundations, the Naval War College Foundation selflessly gives millions of dollars of support to ensure the continued greatness of this great college. I remember joining the foundation as a way of continuing my ties with this special institution. Many thanks for the foundation's generosity. Bless you all for what you do. 
So it's been almost 20 years since I graduated from this amazing institution, your Naval War College, and I remember how I felt that day. I remember that feeling of accomplishment for completing a rigorous course of study, a two-year master's degree in 10 months. I remember the joy of having a new set of skills, a new mental toolkit, perhaps, a new ability for critical thinking. I remember how awed I was by this extraordinary faculty. And I am sure some of my professors were equally awed that I was able to somehow squeak by in this environment so far from the operational environment I knew so well. I remember the camaraderie of my classmates, both international and from the then alien worlds of joint services. I was a better officer from those days forward. And I remember the slight hint of uncertainty, a trepidation, and perhaps even a small touch of fear about the road ahead and the more demanding assignments that potentially awaited me. I trust some of you may have some of these same feelings. And now you go forward not merely to execute, for God bless you to lead others to the gates of hell and back when called upon, but rather to think, to help shape the contours of the debate, to help assess and clarify the seemingly impossible, to provide the key argument that carries the day, to be the light of the ethical standard for others to emulate, but most importantly, to distill the essence of courage in all that you do. Albert Einstein said, any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. And you may not know it, but you are that genius. You now muster the courage. If not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Each of you will return to positions of great responsibility in government, at headquarters staffs, and even leading forces in combat. Knowing this, I am reminded of the great American revolutionary hero, John Paul Jones, who said, sign on, young man, and sail with me. The stature of our homeland is no more than the measure of ourselves. Our job is to keep her free. Our will is to keep the torch of freedom burning for all. To this solemn purpose, we call on the young, the brave, the strong, and the free. Heed my call. Come to the sea. Come sail with me. Today, you sail away to destinations far and near, distant corners of the globe, to strange and curious cultures, including a place called Pentagon, to further define the stature of your homeland, to keep her free, to even the last full measure of devotion if required, to keep that torch of freedom burning for now and forevermore. And so today, we graduate 12 students from the Nimitz course, taught by the College of Naval Warfare and the Naval Command College, and 44 students from the Spruance course, taught by the College of Naval Command and Staff and the Naval Staff College. Congratulations to each of you. This past year of in-residence education is truly a gift from the nation to you. As you continue to grow in rank and responsibility, you'll find there is no more precious a commodity than time. And you've just been given a gift of a year of study, reflection, and debate. A gift of time to grow intellectually and to prepare for the challenges that wait. Do not take this gift for granted. I ask each of you to be the best war fighter you can be to be ready for the terror of war if it comes, to be ready emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Our world is more dangerous than ever before, and like Sparta, our warriors must be ever ready. I am fond of quoting Shakespeare's Henry V, mostly because it reminds me of the humanity, the simple elements that tie us one to another. But Henry V also found his world more dangerous than ever before. His conclusion was also the need for courage against daunting odds. Henry said, "'Tis true that we are in great danger. The greater, therefore, should our courage be." I ask you all, then, to have courage. Know your faith is not misplaced either in God or in a nation that, for all its warts, is unmatched in all the world. There is no nation like yours, no military as capable, 
No skilled thinkers as abundant and war-tested as you. You are the asymmetric advantage that must hold tight to the strange sinews of liberty that echoes in your very soul. I ask each of you to also develop the constructs of peace, to rage against the dying of the light, to give our children one more month, one more day, one more minute, one more precious second of peace where we can. The UNESCO quotation on the wall of the De Weldon Corridor should speak to us all. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that defenses of peace must be constructed. You attended the world's best war college, but its greatness is not only a better understanding of war, but also an understanding of the enablers of peace in order to make conflict a last resort. As we stand here today, a mere century from a world war that was almost automated in its triggered nature, we must reflect on the horrible costs of our work. The best articulation I have seen remains our very own Professor Sally Payne and her book, The Wars for Asia, when she implores us to remember that wars produce sudden and irrevocable changes. Although they are fought for reasons, they can stampede passions, and mass passions give no quarter to reason, let alone to any individuals barring the way. Millions of lives lost means millions of roads not taken, altering the roster of the born and the unborn and producing decisions informed by the road taken. The passions elicited by the killing, the dying, and the witnessing put a period on the way the world was. The combustion of reason and passion leaves transformative and often unintended outcomes, which in the long term may prove more important than the war's original purpose. Given the cost, unpredictability, and irretrievability, wars are important to understand. I ask you, therefore, to understand your art and the need for the constructs of war and peace. I hope this college has given you the skills. Really, I hope it has been a gift. Our art can never be an independent task divorced from policy of our nation. Our professor Milan Vago tells us, in a concept no doubt hammered home in your studies, that to have any lasting value, tactical successes must be achieved as part of a larger and broader framework determined by strategy and policy. You now go forward to be the individuals who will determine that strategy and contribute to that policy. And your journey will take you into the halls of the most powerful decision-making forums in the world. I hope, nay, I know, our great college has prepared you for this journey. So I'll close now with the words of the great British philosopher, Christopher Robin, who said to his friend Pooh Bear on a day much like today, if ever there is a tomorrow when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And so, braver, stronger, and smarter, at the conclusion of this year of study, all of us wish you Godspeed. God bless us, everyone. Thank you for those remarks, Admiral Harley. For each graduating class, one student is selected for recognition as the President's Honor Graduate. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of armed and government services in the public interest. For the College of Naval Warfare, the honor graduate of the November 2016 graduating class is Commander Jeffrey Palmer. Commander Palmer, would you please come to the stage? Commander Palmer served as a seminar academic rep, chair for NSA Academic Committee, member of Halsey Bravo research uh, project, wrote an article that was published in the National Interest, served in a soup kitchen for the Evangelical Friend Church, participated in Newport Adult Soccer League, 
and probably his most demanding accomplishment of all was um, welcoming the, quadru the Palmer quadruplets to the, uh, the Palmer and the Navy War College family. <laughs> Along with... Along with the certificate, he has received an engraved Weems and Plath compass from the Naval War College Foundation. For the College of Naval Command and Staff, the honor graduate for the November 2016 graduating class is Lieutenant Coleman Ward. Lieutenant Ward, would you please come to the stage to receive your award? Lieutenant Ward served as a seminar leader and academic officer, Halsey Alpha team leader, participated in Naval War College Hockey League, and wrote an article on distributed lethality that was published by the Center for International and Maritime Security. Along with a certificate, he is receiving an engraved Weems and Plath compass from the Naval War College Foundation. Now give our honor graduates a few moments to address their fellow graduates and classmates. Uh, thank you, Admiral. This is a great honor. I think the biggest reason I'm up here, though, is as Captain Keyes referred to, um, I've maxed out the degree of difficulty and somehow stuck the landing. Um, but and I've got some people to thank in that regard, but I'll get back to that in a minute. First off, I'd like to thank uh, all my moderators uh, for NSDM, Mary Rom, Jameson Hines, uh, Nick Gavazdev, uh, who really challenged me uh, in terms of my thinking. Uh, Professor Gavazdev also, additionally, who gave me an opportunity to do some research for him over the summer and, and help smooth the way towards uh, publishing, uh, which was a real uh, gratifying uh, career milestone to make for me. Uh, Commander John Sheehan and Rick Moss went out of their way to work with me despite the split attention I had during strategy and policy. Uh, Jamie Gannon and Lieutenant Colonel uh, Tony New uh, did an excellent job of refereeing a, 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 a vigorous JMO seminar um, and uh, Rick Moss again, and uh, Hank Camrat and Bill Murray uh, were great facilitators for the Halsey Bravo program. Very thankful to all the moderators. I learned a lot from them. I had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, I learned I have a lot more to learn too. So that's that's my homework going forward. Um, I also like to thank my classmates, uh, particularly from the seminars, but also across the uh, the entire span of the College of Naval Warfare. Um, they made this a, a real uh, real sharpening iron experience for me, and I'll always be thankful for it. Uh, so getting back to that degree of difficulty thing, um, so yeah, we came here with two kids, and we leave with six. Um, <laughs> we, we, uh, Jill and I had quadruplets in February, right at the beginning of the NSDM exercise. I really recommend that time frame to, to do this kind of thing. Uh, in all seriousness, though, across the, the staff, the faculty, uh, seminar mates, uh, dean of students' office, I'll call out Commander Bill Hendrickson in particular, but Everyone across the span gave us the help, the space we needed to, to go see our kids in the NICU in Providence, to take kids to doctor's appointments in Boston. Uh, just very understanding across the board. People brought us meals, took time to hold a baby, and we'll always be thankful for that. Um, finally, uh, we were, I'm sorry, I, I also should thank the Officers Club for understanding when we took over their elevator with all of our strollers. Um, a great place for kids. and. Uh, we talked about Evangelical Friends Church in Newport. There are a lot of war college students that are part of that church, and that church was a, a real support to us during this time. So this, the college and the whole community uh, should feel uh, really good about all the support they gave us shipmates, so thank you. Um, so having said all that, I feel a bit teased to have come here. Um, <laughs> it's not just because we couldn't go into all the restaurants in downtown Newport. Um, it's about the college itself. There's so much goodness uh, going on here across the departments, and I know I just got a small sample of it. I know my classmates got uh, more of it to see. I wanted to call it specifically um, the uh, Gene Anderson and Liz Cavallaro and the rest of the folks in Causal uh, who put on the uh, personal development course during the summer and also run the electives program. That was uh, a, real, um, a, a real development moment for me, real critical at this time in my career, and I really appreciate the fact that we support that. Uh, and then I'll also say thank you to the, uh, my first experience with the War College, which was the Strategic Studies Group, 
and though that group has sunset, I tried to bring some of that goodness and boldness that's part of that group into my seminar, so I hope I've been able to do that. Um, I'll echo my NSDM seminar mate, Mike Ray, who said at the, uh, 2000, the uh, March graduation, um, if you ever come up with a JPME phase three, uh, give me a call, because I'd like to come back. Uh, <laughs> It was great. So again, just to sum up, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, it was a great experience for us, for me. Uh, I know it was for the rest of my classmates, too. Um, I look forward to applying the lessons that I've learned here uh, in the fleet uh, and leading my sailors in the future, because of course that's where the goodness comes in, is taking everything we've got here, putting it into, into practice, uh, and giving it to, to other folks who don't get you know, the opportunity to come here like we do. Uh, so, in, in accordance with the motto, we're time to go take this knowledge of sea power and turn it into victory. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Admiral, select members of the faculty, fellow graduates, and family and friends. Uh, it's a real honor to be here speaking to you today. And um, what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes uh, to discuss you know, some, of the, some of the takeaways that I have from my college experience, and as well to give thanks for all the people who have made this very memorable, um, as well as rewarding. Uh, so growing up, I was, I was mostly interested in you know, the science, sciences and solving math problems, and not too keen on doing all the readings and, and uh, writing papers and whatnot. Um, and I think it was the certainty of knowing that there was always a correct answer when doing those, you know, doing those math and science problems that, that kind of made that more appealing to me back then. Um, and needless to say, you know, I was quickly forced outside my comfort zone, you know, once I got here to the War College. But, you know, as this chapter in my career comes to a close, I can tell you that it's been the most enlightening educational experience that I've had. And I'd like to expand on that with just three uh, very quick points, um, each of which characterized by a paradigm shift that I experienced along the way. Um, the first shift was kind of that tactical to operational and strategic. Um, you know, the, Going through the curriculum, I've realized that the Department of Defense um, enterprise is, is one, a complicated organism, but as well, its mission is even more complex. You know, spending my short time in the Navy um, to, to date, dealing mostly at the tactical level, you know, is extremely enlightening to explore the operational, strategic, and political aspects of military operations. Um, just looking back at some of the experiences we've had from the guest speakers, you know, we've had multiple geographic combatant commanders. Um, we've had the sec def, we've even had a chief justice come through here and just kind of understanding how the whole DOD enterprise works together has been uh, truly enlightening. Um, and I've been thoroughly conditioned to recognize how the bigger picture influences military operations at the tactical level. Um, second, the paradigm shift that I had was kind of formulas to framework. So kind of going off this idea of, you know, those math and science equations, you could always get the right answer. Um, but here at the War College, you know, you're forced to, uh, to first learn frameworks and then apply them to very complex problems. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, there's not always a right answer. There's usually not a correct answer. Um, and there may be, there may be no answer. Um, but I've come to realize the value of diversity of opinions and perspectives um, that were brought to bear by not only uh, my classmates in the Navy, but as well, you know, the sister services, as well as our international students. Um, the last paradigm shift, and I think the most important, was that of, you know, making the shift from training at the tactical level to education here at the War College. Um, you know, it's all too easy these days to get distracted by technology, you know, where relative military strength is measured by how stealthy your fighters are, or how many nukes you can launch from a submarine, or how far your missiles can fly. You know, all, thing, all these things aside, the strongest military is the one that can outthink its enemy. Um, so with those kind of lessons learned, I'd like to turn to giving thanks. First, to the faculty. I want to thank you for demanding us all to think critically, for forcing us to challenge assumptions, for stimulating meaningful debate, debate and discussion. And I just have to say that I've enjoyed learning from you, um, from your experiences, as well as your leadership. So thank you. To my fellow graduates of the intermediate and senior class, I think I've had the opportunity to work with both of you. Um, or some of you from, from each class. Um, your experiences from the other communities, not just the submarine community, um, within the Navy as well as from sister services and across the DOD enterprise has, has broadened my horizons and, uh, and kind of what I understand, the, the, not just the Navy, 
but the military and the DOD to be. Um, I've enjoyed debating with you in class through our seminars. Um, some of them got kind of ugly pretty quick, but I, but I think they were all very useful. Um, and I, I want to take this, this time to also recognize our international students. You know, they're, they're not graduating with us today because they graduate in June, um, but I, I cannot stress enough how valuable, it, how valuable it is to have those international students in the class with us. You know, I can think back to my early days at the Naval War College in strategy and war and having the, the Kuwaiti officer recounting the experiences that he had, not just with him, but with his mother and father um, as the events were unfolding um, with the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait back in the early 90s. And you're just not going to get that from, from reading, uh, you know, old news clips and books. So that was extremely valuable, and I'm very fortunate to have the experience to interact with our international students. Um, as well, I also had the distinct privilege of um, participating in the, the Halsey Alpha Advanced Research Program, and, and I'd say I'd, I probably learned, or I'd say it's a, the most dense type of learning um, that I had here at the War College, you know, working with, with guys like uh, W and Ricky there in the audience, you know, I was able to bring kind of my submarine experience to bear in, in conducting these war games. But I had no idea what what happened with uh, you know with the air picture with you know with the air with the uh, air force guys and the army guys and you guys really all brought that together and helped me understand what it means to joint uh, to fight jointly in a in a maritime campaign. So thank you. And finally, to the families, you know even though no one deploys or is sent to the front lines while we're here at the War College, um, we still fulfill the military obligation to serve. You know through education today, we are we are better served to, uh, to serve our country tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to my mom and dad, Tracy and Doug, as well as my wife and son, Eileen and Riley in the back. Um, I certainly would not be here today uh, without your love and support. So I look forward to taking my new honed skills back to the fleet, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Master of Arts degree in National Security and Strategic Studies or Defense and Strategic Studies as appropriate will now be conferred to the graduates. Will the graduates please rise and remain in place? Rear Admiral Harley, please approach the podium, sir. Admiral, I have the honor to present the, no the November graduates of the Naval War College candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies and Defense and strategic studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power invested in me, by the Almighty God, the Secretary of the Navy, the accreditation of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I confer upon you all appropriate degrees and diplomas. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting through your applause the November 2016 graduates of the United States Naval War College. Thank you, Admiral. Graduates, please be seated. Beyond the requirements for graduation, Certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. For those in the top 5%, they are receiving a diploma with the highest dis distinction. Those in the next 15% will receive a diploma with distinctions. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Graduates, please proceed to the stage as your name is read. Guests are welcome to come forward to take photographs. Please try to hold your applause until all names have been read. Rear Admiral Harley, Dr. Hickey, and Dean Hahn, please rise. presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Warfare and their next duty assignment. Commander Andrew V. Byrne, United States Navy, Joint Planning Support Element, Norfolk, Virginia. Commander Marcus A. Devine, United States Navy, with high distinction. Naval Consolidated Brig, Chesapeake, Virginia. Commander Mary Catherine Devine, 
United States Navy, USS Bainbridge, DDD, DDG 96, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Kevin S. McNulty, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy, with distinction. U.S. Special Operations Command, Tampa, Florida. Captain John P. Moon, Dental Corps, U.S. Navy, BUMED, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony E. New, U.S. Army, U.S. Naval War College, Joint Military Operations Department. Lieutenant Commander Matthew J. Nieswan, U.S. Navy, Strike Fighter Squadron 106, Virginia Beach, Florida, uh, Virginia. Commander Jeffrey M. Palmer, U.S. Navy with distinction. Defense Intelligence Agency, Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Kevin L. Shackelford, U.S. Navy, Naval Air Warfare Center, Training Systems Division, Orlando, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Joseph Spinks, U.S. Navy, U.S. Strategic Command, Omaha, Nebraska. Commander Samuel E. Young, U.S. Navy, Carrier Strike Group 2, Norfolk, Virginia. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Command and Staff and their next duty assignment. Major Anthony J. Allen, U.S. Army, with distinction, 18th Field Artillery Brigade, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Lieutenant Commander Lucas Rockford Argobright, U.S. Navy, U.S. Fleet Forces Command, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Willard E. Ball, U.S. Navy, DNI Buper Support, Millington, Tennessee. Lieutenant Commander Samuel Betancourt, U.S. Navy, Supreme Allied Commander, Europe, Casto, Belgium. Lieutenant Commander Timothy Bierbach, U.S. Navy, VP-30, Jacksonville, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Larry Jeff Blankenship, U.S. Navy, U.S. Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander Michael Patrick Betcher, Jr., U.S. Navy, with distinction. Naval Operations Support Center, Avoca, Pennsylvania. Lieutenant Commander Joseph E. Cantu, Jr., U.S. Navy, U.S. European Command, Stuttgart, Germany. Lieutenant Commander Lloyd L. Corr, U.S. Navy, Center for Security Forces Learning Site, Gulfport, Mississippi. Lieutenant Commander David Joseph Dartes, U.S. Navy, VFA 25, Lamore, California. Lieutenant Commander Patrick Calgill Drain, U.S. Navy, United States Military Training Mission, Jabal, Saudi Arabia. Lieutenant Commander W. Todd Emmons, U.S. Navy, HSM 48, NAS uh, Mayport, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Matthew L. Enos, U.S. Navy, with high distinction, Joint Staff Hampton Roads, J7, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Christopher Douglas Glandon, U.S. Navy, with distinction, U.S. Strategic Command, Omaha, Nebraska. Lieutenant Commander Brendan T. Gray, U.S. Navy, with distinction, NATO Joint Elect Electronic War Corps Staff, Royal Naval Air Station, Yobleton, Somerset, United Kingdom. Lieutenant Commander Brian M. Haney, U.S. Navy, VAQ-129, NAS Whidbey Island, Washington. Commander Robert Hanvey, U.S. Navy, Naval Reserve Forces Command, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Chad H. Harvey, U.S. Navy, with high distinction, U.S. Strategic Command Joint Functional Component Command for Space, Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. Lieutenant Commander Brian Haas, U.S. Navy, with distinction, U.S. Northern Command, Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
Major Devin M. Henry, U.S. Army, Brigade Modernization Command, Fort Bliss, Texas. Lieutenant Commander Dirk Hendricks Heron, U.S. Navy, with distinction, VFA 101, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Sean M. Jarvis, U.S. Navy, U.S. European Command Headquarters, Stuttgart, Germany. Lieutenant Jason David Junker, U.S. Navy, Explosive Ordnance Disposal Mobile Unit 8, Rota, Spain. Lieutenant Commander Lucian D. Kins, U.S. Navy, Carrier Strike Group 8, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Daniel Derek Quitu, U.S. Navy, Joint Force Command North, Brunswick, Netherlands. Major Morgan H. Laird, U.S. Army, Crowbrook Field, Eglin, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Carlo D. Leveron, U.S. Navy, HSM 35, San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander James Matthew Malvasio, U.S. Navy, U.S. Special Operations Command, Tampa, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Hector Marin, U.S. Navy, USS Pasadena, SSN 752, Point Loma, San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander Caleb C. Moore, U.S. Navy, Patrol Squadron 30, Jacksonville, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Larry J. Parker, U.S. Navy, U.S. European Command, Stuttgart, Germany. Major Samuel McGowan Price III, U.S. Army, 3rd Infantry Division, Fort Stewart, Georgia. Lieutenant Commander Steve Reese, U.S. Navy, U.S. Special Operations Command, Tampa, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Eric K. Rolfs, U.S. Navy, Surface Warfare Officer School, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander Craig Salveson, U.S. Navy, NATO School, Oberammergau, Germany. Lieutenant Commander Catherine Brady Sears, U.S. Navy, with distinction, U.S. Special Operations Command, Tampa, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Jonathan Edward Satorius, U.S. Navy, Officer Training Command, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Benjamin D. Thornton, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy, Naval Leadership and Ethics Center, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander David A. Turpin, U.S. Navy, Halsey, a, Halsey Alpha Fellow, U.S. Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Coleman A. Ward, U.S. Navy, with high distinction, Navy, Naval Submarine School, New London, Connecticut. Major Anthony Michael Wirtz, U.S. Army, 4th Military Information Support Group at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Lieutenant Commander Andrew R. Weezy, U.S. Navy, Joint Information Operations Warfare Center, MacDill Air Force Base, Tampa, Florida. Major Anthony Williams, U.S. Army, 5th Special Forces Group, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Unfortunately, the following students could not attend today's ceremony. Commander Michael E. Kinney, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander David J. Schlesinger, U.S. Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a round of applause for our graduates, honorees, and their families. At this time, Commander Todd will deliver the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Let us pray. Eternal God, as you have graced us with your presence, so send us out with your approbation and peace. As these leaders return to staff positions in the operational arena, grant them wisdom in applying the knowledge and skills they have mastered through the course of instruction. Give them the spirit of a scholar warrior, ever seeking a deeper understanding of the forces at play in the field of battle, a greater appreciation of the operational arena, 
and a more precise way forward in the hour of complexity and crisis. Enable them to maintain a steadfastness of purpose, fidelity to their nation, and self-sacrificial dedication to the high principles of honor, courage, and commitment in defense of justice, freedom, and liberty for all. Grant that we may all remain resolute and faithful in our particular places of responsibility, demonstrating by our every thought, word, and deed the honor, courage, and commitment to which we have been called. Amen. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party. This concludes our graduation ceremony. Thank you for joining us this afternoon.